Next up is our session by Katz, and Katz is uh, responsible for uh, for setting up a variety of open source communities um, in Japan. And uh, Katz did that for, for example, Concrete Five, WordPress, uh, Coder Dojo, and other uh, tech users groups. So I think there's uh, we're about to see a very interesting presentation. Katz has pre-recorded the session. Um, Katz is currently also a track lead for one of the tracks here at Multicon. So won't be able to answer your questions right now, but we'll make sure to, um, to forward the questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to still post them at the link below, and we'll make sure to forward them to Katz um, to be answered later. We'll also, <clears throat> apologies, We'll also share um, Kat's contact details so you can get in touch in case you have any questions. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the following presentation. Hi guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, anywhere, somewhere in the world, uh, here in Japan. It's past 11 p.m. I'm going to begin my sessions. All right, here we go. Uh, three steps of how to grow a local community from my experience uh, running several community in Japan. Uh, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself and why you should start a local meetup and ED3 step followed by some tips. First of all, let me uh, just tell you the bottom line. Uh, from what I want to tell you from this uh, presentation is that you can just start your local meetup without the fear and because I share my experience as much as possible and you just have to start one uh, as long as you uh, keep up your rhythm and do it, at your, do it at your own pace and just keep it going. If you keep doing so you can build your open source community easily and you get the priceless experience. So first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Katz. I, today at the Multicon 2020, we, I uh, manage Japanese truck, uh, which just, we just wrapped. And uh, my Multic involvement include the, as an organizer, of uh, Mautic Meetup Nagoya, Japan, which is located in the Kanja Central Japan. I've been, I'm the one of the organizers of this uh, meetup since 2016. As a main job, I work and I funded uh, Concrete 5 Japan Inc. Concrete 5 is the uh, open source CMS uh, coming from the US. And we provide the Concrete 5 Sims integration and maintenance services in Japan. I do uh, Twitter like this, Instagram, and I have more, uh, my own blogs. Uh, not only Concrete 5, I've, I'm involved in uh, many other open source community, including the Coda Dojo Owari, which is the uh, kids programming open source club. Uh, in my neighborhood, and I'm also a member of AWS Users Group and then uh, WordPress Meetup. I love Japanese curry rice, and I go jogging at 4 o'clock in the morning every weekdays, and I hold the AWS uh, certificate. I'm, I'm good at uh, doing the server infrastructure a little bit. So I love open source. And if you love open source product, and if there is, if you don't have the local community of the Mautic, you really should start local meetup. Why? Because you're gonna fall in love with meetups. Uh, for me, I've started the uh, Mautic Meetup Nagoya since 2016. Uh, due to the COVID-19, uh, turmoils I we kind of had to stop since uh, March but 
we've run over 54 meetups since March 2016. And uh, D.V. Hurley, uh, founder of Baltic, came uh, to, to uh, our meetup too back in uh, 2016. It was a really fun experience. At the uh, Mautic Meetup Nagoya, we just we did some time a hackathon, some theme topic seminars, and workshop like this in the picture on the left that uh, we talk about the persona or uh, did the customer journey workshop. So uh, it's not like we are specialists of the marketer that, uh, you know, uh, that top, top of the line marketer, but we just pick topics that uh, we want to learn and share each other. Like uh, my open source journey uh, begins in 2004 when I met Mambo CMS, then later on Joomla CMS. And in 2008, I joined my first Japanese open source community. Then uh, next year, uh, I started my first uh, community, Concrete 5 Japan. Then I fell in love in Concrete 5 and I met many uh, colleagues. Then uh, among the uh, community members, uh, we started a company, Concrete 5 Japan. Now uh, we are a group of uh, 12 people. And also uh, I'm involved in a WordPress meetup, uh, although uh, Concrete 5 and WordPress is, you know, CMS kind of competitor. I also got involved in a WordPress meetup. I've met my wife. <laughs> so uh, this was the, when we first met my wife, I mean, start talking, then we got married. Now we have our kids. <laughs> so uh, open source community became not just my business, but it's also my family, I said, all the time. Then one day I met Mautic. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's kind of how I uh, came, came into this world of the Mautic. And uh, in case of Mautic, uh, it's uh, really marketing driven, not only just the technical uh, side of it. Um, so uh, it's uh, for me, I, I got irritated or lost because uh, sometimes you get the installation problem and not just the website uh, that I'm used to. You have email concern and problem and you really need to know and learn about marketing automation skills. So uh, I didn't know anything about the Mautic and marketing automation. So I started a local meetup. And I, I'm not the specialist of the marketing and I didn't know anything about uh, Mautic at all. But I kind of formed like three steps of local meetup and I was able to grow this uh, Mautic meetup step by step. So I'm just going to share it to you. Step one, start your meetup, obviously. Uh, you know, you just have to do it. Uh, so first of all, do your research and know your neighbor and community. How, what kind of uh, open source meetup you have? And there are many other uh, meetups uh, available in your neighborhood, I'm sure of it. Uh, maybe you might have to travel a little bit if you live in like suburb or countryside. But there must be one that you could go. So get to know the local meetup and uh, learn, learn from it. Then next, secure your location. It could be your office. It could be some community center. It could be some conference places. There must be some somewhere that really cheap and convenient. Uh, so set the date and time, which best, uh, which best fits you. Uh, you don't really care about what the other people think. Uh, just only pick the date and time 
just fits you. Which is going to be really important to be able to continue, keep running your local meetup. Then, once you secure those uh, location, uh, try to make announcement in a month advanced. And within, because you don't want to do it too early or you don't want to do it too late. Just about a month is good, uh, good, uh, good range to make announcement. Then within the month, try to promote as much as you can, like social media or the meetup that you went and let you promote your meetup. But don't overdo it though. So, um, so, step one, start your meetup. Well, you know, pretty much you just have to do it. Start a meetup. Do your research, secure location, set date and time, and make announcement in a month's advance, and try to promote as much as you can. Do your research. So uh, there might be some uh, other Maltic meetup in your neighbor. Uh, maybe you might have to travel a little bit, but if you do, try to join it. And there might be some online Maltic meetup available too. It's a good time to join and learn how they do it. And uh, maybe there are many, uh, some marketing related meetup in your neighbor. So maybe you could join that and learn how people are interested. So learn like your local meetup community member are interested. And also, but if you couldn't find anything, maybe any public internet group like Facebook group or Reddit uh, works to uh, uh, check it out, like how people just just do learn like uh, what the people might be interested and pick so you get you start to learn what kind of topic you might want to talk about for your first meetup next secure your location over your meetup it could be your friend's office or your office and co-working office public conference room uh, so I always use my uh, acquaintance co-working office. Uh, he also love hosting the meetup too. So I, um, we just have to pay for the drop-in uh, fee for each member. So we do it really convenient way. So some co-working office are willing to let you use the location for free or per person cost base that you don't have to make a advanced uh, big commitment. And when you check the secured location, you want to check the facilities. How many people that facility can fit in? You should start with small people like four or five. It could be like four to six people. Uh, you you, sh you don't uh, don't pressure yourself to gather to like 20 30 people you should really start from small numbers but I th you know but it's a multi is internet uh, solution so the place usually you want to ha make sure you have an internet access uh, Wi-Fi if you may uh, if you may have to you might have to bring the mobile device the location should have the projector or screen projector and screen or at least the TV set so that you can present uh, to the multi screen to the people. Then you want to check the entrance uh, procedure if there's a security, if you're going to do it at night, make sure the entrance will be open or somebody else will take care of you the entrance of that. Next, set and set date and time. You want to set your date and time which fit you the best. You don't need to think about the others because you are the organizer and you want to hold the uh, meetup which is the 
you feel the most comfortable because you are the organizer, so you don't and you want to keep doing it. Like, uh, if you can, you should make it like a habit, a ritual. So, uh, Maltic meetup, uh, for my case, I set like first Monday night of the month because it's after the end of the month. Uh, end of the end of the month usually have to chase after the deadline. So it's really good that uh, you set um, the first beginning month of beginning month. So it's kind of more relaxed, I think. So that's kind of uh, what I uh, decide to do for the Mautic meetup. Then make announcement in the month's advance. So meetup.com is the best tools. Uh, Mautic community also can help you to set up the meetup.com. Then uh, you should start uh, just around the month before the date. Not too early because people forget. Not too soon because people already made the plan. About a month advance uh, ad announcement is usually the best fit in my experience. Then try to promote as much as you can. So if you have time, set up the Twitter, Facebook page, and website. Then uh, promote online and offline to the uh, local meetup if allowed. Probably it's good to make a flyer. Don't overdo, you know, t because you might irritate other peoples. So, uh, yeah. Then your first meetup. It's important that you share your vision and mission to the members, but it's important that to do it at your own pace. Then, if you are too nervous, maybe join other meetup and learn how other people do. Maybe ask for a meetup to uh, have a presentation. Then practice before you start your own. Next step. After your first meetup, second step is to keep running your meetup. So uh, during the meetup, I, ma I mainly categorize there's a two styles of meetup. Then uh, most important thing is just keep it running. Then uh, you should learn from others and improve, but at your own pace. So uh, two styles of meetup. First one is the seminar style. You set the particular topic and other is the freestyles like hackathon, social drinking, just a party, casual party style. Seminar is good because people will know what to expect so that um, people will come to because they want to know that topic. However, you or somebody else need to prepare for that topic and uh, provide some slide. Freestyle st is the good because um, uh, it's kind of best time to get to know the members, people, each other. However, you cannot just do it all the time uh, because people lose direction of the meetup and where it's going. Next, don't give up and keep it running. So, uh, you know, you just cannot expect the meetup became popular and famous all of a sudden. Sometime uh, you just don't have people show up at all. And you may, you may be discouraged or disappointed. But, you know, on the other hand, it's kind of better to grow a little slower or at your own pace so that you can learn and grow together with the meetup. Just keep keep it running. As long as keep you know you keep it running 
people will recognize. Oh, uh, you doing Mautic meetup every first Monday night? Okay, I'll try to arrange the schedule to come on Monday night. Something like that. So people will recognize you. So I recommend to run at least one year. Then lastly, uh, you know, you should learn from others, the members, and improve your meetup. Uh, you, you just want to keep asking the question, what the member want to learn, and you not only your own meetup, uh, you should join other meetup and how they do it. Of course, Multicon is the best place, and Multic Slack and uh, other open source uh, communities are also a good place to learn. Step three: Grow your meetup. So uh, maybe it's uh, if you could find a partner in the beginning, that would be good. But uh, it's good. You step three is to find the partners then uh, make your meetup resilient and maybe you want to try to organize bigger events then so that your meetup gonna go to the next level so uh um as the uh, along along the way of running the meetup you will get tired uh of running the meetup all by yourself so you want to find someone you can trust uh, you may not be able to find right away. You might have to keep running for a couple months or years until you find someone you can trust. Someone who can help you to brainstorm the next topics. Someone you can exchange the Facebook message or WhatsApp uh, text chat to talk about and uh, uh, talk, you know, what to do for the next topic of, you know, uh, all the time. Then, uh, so the partner that you think you can, they, you can trust them to become a co-organizers. Then after you find a meetup, next step is that you want to make your meetup resilient. As I said uh, just now, you just, um, you just get tired and you sometimes get sick. So you what before you get sick or you got tired, you wanna try to run a meetup without you after um, after a while. Um, I mean, so um, then most importantly, when you ask member to run the meetup by themselves, just don't control it as much as possible. As long as you share the vision and you find a partner that agree with the vision and uh, they'll run it uh, with you, not for you. So don't control it. Then uh, maybe you wanna try to organize a bigger or longer events, maybe once, like bigger place and attendees, maybe longer hours, multi-day events, bigger conferences, maybe you want to look for a sponsor, but um, make sure that you don't track, you don't lose the uh, meetup vision. And just don't do anything beyond your capability. You think you can't do it, just don't overdo it. Otherwise, you, you will be overwhelmed. So uh, um, the last day, I mean, last stage uh, uh, is like my last advice of the step three is that um, enjoy that somebody else started to take the course of the meetup. Uh, so in the beginning, you share your vision and your meetup, then uh, meetup grow with members. So uh, it's good to, t once you reach the final step, um, it's time to think about the set the meetup next goal and mission. Then you could continue to run the meetup. You could think of retiring or um, fin 
finish the meetup, or you could think about hand over the leadership to somebody else. That's it. That's uh, three steps. Uh, and here's uh, some useful tips. I'm just going to quickly go over. Take photos. It's really important that you take photo of your meetup because that's a proof of you, you run the meetup. And photos help people to come to your meetup more, but make sure to ask the permission. Uh, these photos really help sometimes if you look for the sponsors as well. And how many people, it shows how many people were there, how many people enjoying. Uh, so sometimes try to take a photo as much as possible. Then, maybe this is easy, but sometimes hard. Keep counting your meetup. How many times you held the meetup. So, uh, as, as, again, I said uh, I did run the Mautic meetup 54 times. Uh, this is like, I think a Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil is the most uh, number of the time that I held the meetup, I think. But uh, meetup, uh, Mautic meetup Nagoya is the second most um, meetup happened in the world of the Mautic, I think. So um, we are proud of it. And the lastly, because this is the Mautic meetup, Mautic, I have a Mautic golden topics. So if you are tired, I mean, if you run out of the ideas, uh, this is the always uh, I try to pick that you member never get tired of it. Like marketing automation 101, installing Martic workshop, persona workshop, customer journey map, customer journey map workshop, which you never be able to get the uh, right answer. Of course, it's really fun uh, workshop segment and campaign workshop after you uh, did the customer journey map workshop, email workshop, uh, DNS, SPF records, and spamming is always a hot topic. And uh, maybe it's good to have a favorite marketing books discussion, like talk, biblio, you know, uh, bring uh, like, share the idea of what you read and learn about marketing. You know, it's, it's uh, always good to, uh, good the discussion starter. This topic never gets old. So you always learn something new. Then once you made the slide and documentation, uh, you can keep using them. All right, uh, that's about it. So uh, I hope uh, you know this meetup will help you grow and you have a priceless experience. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. Uh, sorry, I went through the slide really quick, but I tried to put uh, as much stuff as possible into the slide. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, all right. So let's take a look at the question at the ahaslide.com. All right. All right, uh, I think I have one or two question if there is one. So that was uh, Katz's presentation. Um, the thing is that we have a bit of a scheduling conflict because Katz is currently a uh, track lead in a different track here at Multicon. So uh, we don't have any questions in the AHA slides I see so far. So if you have any questions for Katz, uh, make sure to reach out to him by Twitter or Instagram or via, via his website. He's also to be found on Slack, on Multi Slack. You can find him there. So if you have any questions about this presentation, uh, feel free to reach out to him. Uh, again, he's not here because he's, uh, he's track lead for a different track currently. Um, thank you so much for watching. I think there was a lot of valuable information in this presentation. Um, I'm just going to leave the screen for around one more minute here so you can see all the contact details. Um, so please feel free to write down the contact details if you want to reach out. And otherwise, we're going to have the next session in 30 minutes from now, 
which is going to be hosted by uh, Faber Kelvin. It's going to be about um, how non-programmers can contribute to open source Emotic. I'm very much looking forward to the presentation. I think there's a great need for, uh, for those people in the Emotic community. There's just a lot of things to do. And I think we already have a great uh, yeah, team of community members, but there's always room for more, of course. So um, I'm assuming that if you want to contact Katz about the presentation we just had, uh, that you have noted the contact details. And what I'll do for now is I'll just give you a little bit of a break. So if you want to switch to a different track, feel free to do so. And I hope to see you here in about 30 minutes from now. Thank you and uh, see you in a second.